You're now listening to the Palmetto Dugout Show, hosted by State Director Sammy Esposito, Associate Scouts Drew Stewart and Sean Smith, that discuss all things related to amateur baseball in South Carolina. Here are your hosts. Welcome into episode 51 of the Palmetto Dugout Show. We're a week away from the one-year anniversary, but... Welcome to Mr. Espo, and look who's back. We got Sean Smith back on the Palmetto Dugout Show. What's going on, guys? You know, it, this was obviously another big day for uh, PBR South Carolina with Mr. Smith back on, but more so a humongous weekend. Week we had last week with the one and only Sean Smith returning down to Lake Point for PBR South Carolina. So, I mean, I, I don't – I don't know what was better, the players or Sean. I'm going to go with Sean. I'm going to go lead on that. <laughs> Sean looked like he's muted. It's good himself. to get back out there and see you all this week. Um, yeah, no, it was – It was. Uh, I definitely missed it. You know, sitting behind a desk in the office is uh, getting a little tough, but it was good to get back out on the field and see you all. Um, no, it was – and see, see all the players. And, I mean, that environment at future games, you know, cannot be matched, so – have that be my first time back was uh couldn't could have been better so it was good to, good to get back out it was great to have sean back um the the he's the other part of the smith that's also joined this show uh previously <laughs> he the other smith is mia right now we can't find him um <laughs> he, he might have retired without telling anybody i don't know he, i didn't get any paperwork sent in i don't i don't know what's going on he's uh I guess that, that assistant principal life has gotten him a little bit too much. <laughs> it's gotten him. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe down below. Um, on episode 51, we're going to break down the wonderful future games. Um, Team Carolina going one and two, 375 coaches in attendance for the future games. And as always, great talent everywhere on the field, right? Yeah, new new league record, I believe, for uh, college coaches at, uh, at the future game event. So, you know, you you get you get that kind of coverage, you get that kind of uh, evaluation from coaches. It's it's one of a kind, special environment for those players, right? I mean, heck, the first guy we faced came out of the shoot from California, going eighty eight to ninety one with a plus breaking ball, kind of blowing some doors off. So, you know, that our guys get a chance to get out there and play against top notch competition, and then get to play in front of all the eyes um, out there. And you know, it's not. This is not one of those where it's just a, a regional deal or an in-state deal. It's a it's a national national coverage, and you know whether some of these guys get some opportunities to go out of area or out of country. I mean they they've they definitely opened up a lot of eyeballs um, this this weekend. So this past week, so it was it was a lot of fun. It was sometimes kind of tight to get through that to go off to our juniors game to bar- barrel through the coaches area back there but but phenomenal phenomenal week for for evaluation of, of these talented players and I mean and not to mention that you know with the new NCAA rule that this this age group falls right in line with that so the you know the coaches can immediately get in touch what is it it's tomorrow right August 1st tomorrow so they can start getting in touch with uh, guys going into their junior year so I mean that that timeline just works out perfectly for for the future games so yeah, no doubt we expect some big announcements um, forthcoming for some of these guys um, a part of Team Carolina. Um, and kind of diving into that roster, we had 10 South Carolina guys present, so we'll talk about those 10. Um, we'll, we'll flip it over to Sean here to start us off. What you got, Sean? Yeah, I mean, the first guy I wanted to talk about with uh, was uh, Justin Sheffield, who we've had the opportunity to see a couple of times now at a few different events. And, I mean, the same thing stood out, the bat speed, uh, you know, a little like some good some good movements there at the plate he had. I think I think one real, real good uh, shot, I want to say, in the second game uh, against that mid-Atlantic team where he, he had that backside. I think it was a triple. Ended up being a triple, I believe. Um, but uh, he had a couple of really good line drives. I, I really liked the approach going the other way. I mean, most of the balls that he barreled up were they were they were kind of on the ground. He was maybe maybe uh, getting a little bit more on top of the ball, but at least it was going the other way. And I mean, multiple times I want to say uh, above ninety five mile an hour exit velocity going the other direction. So I mean, that's all in there. You can see the tools, and not to mention as well the uh, the defense stood out to me. Um, you know, he he was playing third base in high school. I want to say he was he was telling us. I mean, all he played this week was uh, the outfield. He played center field and right field mostly, and uh, in the 
I, I believe in the first game he ran down a ball in center field, and I know he didn't make the catch, but he must have ran 30, 40 yards to go go over there, and he just tipped off his glove. And, you know, somebody that has, you know, just these these raw tools in the outfield, you can definitely see it all in there. He made a couple adjustments. He had a throw from right field in one of the games that he way overshot the catcher and then threw out a guy in our last game also from right field going to the plate. So you just you really like to see that from from Justin, and uh, it'll be it'll be exciting to see him as, as he really finds his position and locks in. And, you know, he's still got that baby face going on as well, you know, so he's he's still a young guy. He's got a lot of filling out to do, so I can only imagine that power and uh, that hit tool is going to show out a little bit more as he gets older. Yeah, no doubt. We uh, we had multiple coaches on the on the week asking about him. So so yeah, he obviously opened up some eyeballs with his performance. Um, guy, I'm gonna start off with is 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 I think I think I'll, I'll throw that one out there. I think that is probably the the top prospect of this uh, this deal for us. Um, Will Craddock. Uh, you know, we we got a chance to watch Will play few times in the high school season and, and he kind of, you know, stood out, especially defensively kind of looked the part and you're always, you know, the, the question was, is he going to hit enough? Um, you know, and then Will shows up, you know, comes in there to check in workout day. And I mean, the sheer size of him, right. I mean, it, it's, was he six, four, 195 pounds. Um, we kind of jokingly said it's like uh, Cal Ripken jr. Out there with his size, but you know, you go through the workout day, um, you know, runs a six nine sixty. Um, defensively is up to or, or offensively exit velocity in the workout was ninety nine nine. Defensively, you know, to steal a, a line from Sports Center, smooth as the other side of the pillow, but shows good arm strength, good arm actions. Kind of as clean as you can have defensively when you're looking out there, watching the hands and, and just the ease of the operation. You know, you like you watch a lot of young guys, especially in the infield. It, it's it's kind of a forceful motion. You know, this was very smooth, very clean actions. Um, you know, and then with the bat, you know, defensively, I, I talked about the the exit velocity, but, you know, running balls, you know, deep, you know, and then BP showing an impressive, you know, hard contact consistently. And then the game, I think it was game two, you know, first game, I, you know, I know he's got his doors blown off a little bit. That first at bat talked about that pitcher from California, but, the second game, he smokes one, you know, to the base of the wall and dead center winds up, you know, using that speed, getting a triple. Um, and the third game goes to right center gap on, a, I think, a two-strike breaking ball. Justin on that one. I, Will, to me, has all the tools, has all the ability to be a high-round draft pick, whether that's going to be in a couple years or, or after a few years in college. Only time's going to tell on that one. But I do know he's going to have himself a busy, busy day tomorrow on the phone. Um, I hope he pays his phone bill and has that thing charged, ready to roll tomorrow, because it, it's going to be a long day for him, but a, but an eventful one. But I, I think I think Will really really stood out to me, and I know he opened a ton of eyes. But you just kind of watch him again. You talked about a little bit, Sean, with Chef with the baby face. He as big as he is, he still has that baby face, and still you know lacking some upper body strength that obviously is going to come with with some maturity and in the weight room. And he, you know, a lot of times you see a big kid like that, you're going to go, he's a, he's a third baseman. But but he showed the ability to really be able to stick it short and make all the plays defensively. Yeah, definitely. And Craddock, Craddock not to mention, was a uh, definitely a favorite of some of our national guys. So so good to see him get some get some attention there. Uh, he uh, well deserved attention, I should say. Um, the next guy I wanted to talk about is uh, our our only returner from last year, outfielder Andrew Palmer from Oceanside. Uh, academy down there in uh, Charleston area and Palmer did did his thing once again um, you know he just ran I want to say what 662 on the workout day in the 60 mm -hmm. I mean that was just incredible you can see the athleticism and the strength throughout just by standing next to him it's all in there and you know I, I, I really liked what he had to do in the game he did he went backside with the homer that that uh, that the second game I believe uh, there was really good swing there uh, going the other going the other way for him it was good to see him put punch one out I don't think I saw any other Opposite field home, opposite field home runs throughout the entire event, and you know, doing his thing out there. I like, I like seeing him. we put him in center field a little bit. Um, we're not, we're not quite sure where he's going to stick defensively long term, but I, we, we believe it's going to be an outfield position. And if he can really hone in his skills, he has the athleticism to play uh, in that premium position out there in center. If if he can do it, so really good to see him out there once again. You know, we've we've seen him a number of times as well, especially last year. Oh, and then I forgot to mention, uh, 
you know, third career home run in the last game of the, he was inside the park. It got past, got past the right field. On the bag. He, you can only, you can only play the cards you're dealt. And he turned on the jets going around the bags and came in, slid into home. It was a, it was a good little play there. And uh, it was, it was really good to see from him, you know, just absolutely doing his thing. And uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens with Oceanside this year. I know they graduated a number of seniors, but I'm expecting Palmer to step in down there and, uh, Keep them up, you know, just in that same that same pedigree that they've always had. But I'm sure he'll step in and be be that guy going into next spring. Coach, it was also a backside home run as well for that inside yeah. the park. Another one. So. <laughs> I did see two. I did see two. Yeah. <laughs> two. Two backside home runs all came from him. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm gonna go on the pitching side right here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Bradley Anderson. So Bradley was a late pickup for us with a lot of. Uh, you know the guys from PBR Georgia kind of give those guys a tip of the cap, kind of threw him, threw our name, our you know his name our way, and you know when they gave us his name, we had a couple events left, so we had to kind of get through those before we before we figured um, uh, out the roster. But he was able to come in, he came in on workout day, got the stuff, kind of hung out a little bit, and then he uh, didn't pitch until day three. Football player, QB for his high school. Um, everybody likes to throw the word terminology QB one around. I'm just going to say he's a quarterback for a school, um, you know, and also which was very impressive. He threw on Saturday. Friday was their first day of practice in pads. So you don't, you don't know what you're going to get, right? It's 95 degrees outside. You're in football practice. You got pads on. I know those Q- QBs don't get hit, but still you're running around, got practice. It's hot and he comes out and it's a, it's a thin, wiry frame, right? He's 5'11", 100, 140 pounds, and obviously a ton to dream on. You know, you know, even if he stays the same height and he packs on 20, 25 pounds, which you seem to be easy over the next few years, you can kind of see a jump. But he comes out, and it's it's 86 to 89, 87, 89. You know, I think he touched a 90 around in there, but it showed two-plus breaking balls over the top arm slot with a very, very quick arm um, through a good slider and a really good 12 to six curveball curveball about 71, 73. The slider I think was 76, 77, but both showed big time spin to those balls. And, and, you know, I think this will be one thing as he gets a little bit better, he, you know, pitching wise, he, the one at bat, he goes back, back, back breaking balls on a guy and guy didn't see it at all. Right. Completely fools him. The guy's bailing out of the way, kind of tries to sneak a fastball wise and gives up a hit, but, it kind of showed his stuff, right? You, you got a good hitter in the batter's box, and he spins a breaking ball in there, and the guy kind of you know crumbles out of the way, doesn't even pick that thing up. But Bradley's a young man. I, you know, I'm glad we wound up taking a flyer on him. PBR Georgia was all over that one, um, telling us about him. But you watch the, you watch the athleticism, you watch quickness in the arm, and you can dream on you know him adding a little bit of weight on there, and, and you see the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, definitely. He was a uh, he was definitely a fun one to watch and uh, and right up there at the very like you said that I remember that he went two breaking balls in a row had I think it was two looking breaking balls the, the guy had no chance and then he put the fastball up there and the guy you know dinked one out into left field yeah I wish I wish he had gone back to that breaking ball one more time but yeah no he he was definitely a fun one to watch uh, the next guy I wanted to bring up was a uh, Brady Gold of Wando High School middle infielder. Uh, you know, he Brady Brady uh, actually had had a little bit of bad luck in the first couple of games. I don't I don't know if he reached base, uh, but had it was the player of the game in our last game there uh, against Team Florida. Went two for three with a double and a base hit and a couple of RBIs, I believe. Um, but Brady, I just I love the I love the movements. All of all of his movements are sound and precise, and he he looks like a ball player. Really, I I, I can't can't say much more about it. I mean, he, the the frame's still a little slight. You know, he's still growing into it a little bit, but he's got broad shoulders, and like I said, he's got all those movements are just are just they're they're I mean next level movements to me. I just think that you know in the box he was on time on every single arm that we saw. He just missed a couple. I knew I remember. I think he had a few like. Three two counts where he got he got some uh, brinker balls that he was fooled on there. He was probably sitting on the fastball there, but he was on, on time with uh, as many high powered arms as we saw there, and uh, you know found some balls off. You know, but he's right there. He's just he's he's got he's w- once he makes that next step just to get a little bit quicker, a little bit stronger. I th- I think Brady's going to be one that, that we're going to be looking at. Some some coaches are definitely going to be coming in and looking for a guy that you know they're not even going to have to worry about because he just seems he seems like he's a ball player, and uh, you know he's a guy that's going to make an impact at the next level. Yeah, got some good bloodlines with his dad being a former first rounder back in the day. But yeah, I think he might have gotten pitched a little bit harder than everybody. I think he got more three two breaking balls mm-hmm. than, than anybody else. So kind of, kind of feel a little little tough for him in that one. 
Uh, kind of one of his, his teammates with his travel ball team, I'm going to stick with here, is uh, Stowe Rogers. Um, Stowe, big, strong, physical catcher, backstop four, 6'2", 192. Um, you know, and that's kind of a, a theme I think we we kind of hit in the head. Uh, worst case scenario, how we played on the field, we were looking good in uniform. Um, and, and Stowe was another one of those guys for us. And, you know, he's kind of steady Eddie, right? He kind of plays the game that, you know, not too high, not too low, bounces around. Does all the you know the little things the right way, um, you know, and and workout day he goes behind the plate he goes a one nine three to a two o two you know make good accurate throws kind of nice and easy right he doesn't get sped up too much um, he also ran ran really well he ran a six eight six um, sixty times so he did a he did a really good job behind the plate and also showing off his athleticism and he swung the bat well you know got some juice in there in BP day. Was able to run some balls out of the park, uh, game wise. Got some uh, got some big hits as well in the game. So I, I think Stowe's a young man that that continues every single time we've seen him has gotten better, and he continues to do it here. And kind of expect nothing less from him. I think he was up to 96, 97 miles an hour exit velocity on workout day. So he uh, he's got himself a bright future. But he's one of those good guys, especially behind the backstop. You really don't notice him too much because he's. Not making a ton of mistakes. Kind of that easy, easy breezy in there. So Stowe's a Stowe's a fun one to watch. Glad he was on our side. Yeah, Stowe's a good ball player. There's no really no really no way around it. I, I really liked his he's got a line drive approach and you know he had a couple of balls he barreled up in a few different games. So he was definitely a fun one to watch. Uh the next one next guy I want to mention here is uh Lou Jack Cole, uh who's gonna now be attending the P twenty seven Academy, I believe, right? Um, that's correct. He's, he's a guy that, uh, we've, we've had an opportunity to see uh, a few times as well. And I, what I really appreciate about him is just the steady progression that we've been seeing from him. I want to say the first time was at top prospects last year. He was probably a little more 83 to 86 as we keep seeing him, you know, throughout this past spring and summer, he was probably more, you know, 86, 88. And this time around he was 88, 89 in those first couple innings. I mean, that's a dude that's just, he, he, he's going to only keep getting better. I mean, we keep talking about, you know, these guys with the younger faces and things like that. He's a guy that's still got a lot of growing to do and a lot of filling out. Uh, you know, but with that with that fastball and it's a funky angle, you know, it's just kind of it kind of comes out of an odd slot. It just it's it's going to give hitters fits, you know, no matter no matter how hard it's coming out, it's definitely going to play up a little bit. Um, and, you know, so like I said, at around 88, 89, might have grabbed, might have touched the 90 here. I don't, I don't quite remember if he did. But and then the other the other thing that he throws is he, not, not much of a true breaking ball, I guess, but he's kind of got a little cutting action to uh, he, he calls it a two seamer that he just kind of throws like a cutter. That's what he told me. I couldn't I couldn't believe that's what he said. He was that's how he's gripping the ball. But it, it does. It comes at about 80, 82, and it just kind of gets you off the fastball a little bit and thinking about something else. But like I said, with that angle, pretty much anything that he can figure out, you know, that's coming straight and hard, it's going to be hard to pick up. So if you can get any kind of variation with that it's going to be it's going to be a really really tough guy to hit or tough guy to hit off of and now once he's in that p27 academy he's going to get really really good coaching there and they're going to show him how to be how to be a good ball player and uh, he's going to be a guy that's going to be trending up for sure yeah obviously he learns that you know you talk about projection a little rawness you know you see that guy start to get a breaking ball i mean you you went up there and checked it out right it's, it's an extreme you know we talk about all this analytics right it goes really low release height with big time extension. So, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of, like you said, I think the best word you hit it was funky. So those mm -hmm. guys in the batter's box, they see 88, 90, it's good arm, but all of a sudden that ball's on top of you and holds its plane really well. Um, I'm going to go back over to the uh, hitters in her on my side, and I'm going to uh, stick with Peter Marchand. Obviously one of the top players in the state of South Carolina and in the country. And, uh, I, you know, Peter didn't disappoint. You know, another big, strong, physical guy here, right? 6'2", 190 pounds for us. The most impressive part, because we, we've gotten a chance to watch Peter play quite a bit throughout the high school season. He was at the top prospect games last year. Uh, he goes 6'5", 8", 60? 6'5", 60. I mean, we're, we're talking plus running speed here, right? 6'5", 8", 60. It is not, you know, that's that's not something that's average. And, uh, you know, we kept busting his chops, asking if he's going to, call his brother and let him know who the real runner is in that. But you're talking about a 6 to 195-pound frame going that. I mean, that that's very impressive. And I also think he showed his versatility behind the plate, can catch he's or, or plays first, he can play some third base, he can get in the outfield, kind of can do it all. But the one thing that he always does, and I think you hit it on the head best with your tweet, is rolls out of bed and hits. You know, every time we see him play, I feel like he's two for three with like a double and a home run. 
you know, and, and that's about the same thing he did the first game against that tough hour from California. The guy throws a good breaking ball. He stays down on it, hits a one-hop double off the wall. You know, he smokes the ball back up the middle. He just shows the knack to get hits, and he shows the knack to get hits by hitting balls really hard as well with that one. So he, he's a young man that, that we've seen a lot of, and every time we see him, it's like the same thing. Hitters hit, right? And he, and he does it every single time. It's a little bit, you know, sometimes people go, oh, he gets a little too rotational. He spins a little bit too much. And he does this. All I know is all he does is get hits. So, and that's the name of the game when you're in that batter's box, find a way to get the barrel to the ball. And that's what he does. And he does it against good arms. He does it against bad arms. He does it about good velo. He does it against breaking ball guys. It really doesn't matter. So he proved not only to us, that what we already knew that he's one of the best players around, but I think he proved it to a lot of other people this this weekend that he is – this past week that he is one of the top hitters in the country. Without a doubt, yeah. I mean, it was a little surprising that he's even still uncommitted that he could have come to this event. Obviously, we're we're lucky enough to see him see him play right right in front of us. But, yeah, it was definitely exciting to see uh, Peter put on, put on a show there for us. Uh, but the last guy I want to talk about here was uh, Aiden Vorlick, the right-handed pitcher from Somerville High School. Uh, I know we got some time – some time playing there this, you know, in that star studded roster that they got down there uh, this, this past spring. And he got some opportunities to show himself. Uh, but, you know, he, he had two, two different uh, appearances on the bump uh, this time around. He had one on the first day where I think he might have been in his own head just a little bit, you know, just kind of fi- trying to find the zone more than just throwing hard. So he was kind of sitting more around 82, 83. I know he bumped a couple of 88s in there as well, but he was he was just trying to throw strikes, which I can appreciate, just trying to find his footing there. But in that second outing, I, I really I really like to see him bounce back from, from, you know, maybe something that he wasn't expecting so much where he was much more 87, 88, you know, with that really nice over-the-top breaking ball, 12-6, just maybe 11-5 that – really gets hitters off of it. It's coming from the exact same angle as that fastball. And, uh, you know, he induced a few ground balls, I think, and, you know, had a much cleaner inning than, than that first time around, was in and, in, the, in and around the zone at all times. And uh, he's a guy that's really going to have an opportunity to show show what he's got uh, coming in at Somerville next year. And I think he's going to be a, an arm at the top of the rotation for them there. And uh, he's going to be a guy that – and not, not to mention that that frame. It's just it's, – it's kind of that, you know, he's, he's a little thicker around. You know, he's, he's not the tallest guy, but he's a guy that's got strength all the way through it. And – and, you know, he's going to be someone that that, that Velo is going to jump, I, I believe, as well. And once he becomes more of a pitcher, as, as he's got that break of ball as well, he's going to be able to work that two-pitch mix to just about anybody. Yeah, I think he's one of those guys that don't want to completely speak for him. But first day out, kind of like some of our hitters, the first day out, you're, you're kind of overwhelmed a little bit by the, by the environment. You're looking around. You kind of get caught off for a little bit. And then day two, like you said, he was a lot more comfortable his third, second day. He uh, he was he was really comfortable with everything. So, and the kind of the last guy we're going to talk about here, uh, you know, our first starter on the mound, Landon Fowler. I you know, kind of like we a little bit touched on with uh, with Craddock with opening up a ton of eyes, Landon Fowler. Like we we've gotten a chance to watch him quite a bit. I mean, Sean takes full credit here for for mentioning him first for PBR a couple of years ago as a hitter. Mm-hmm. Um, We'll talk about him as a hitter. You know, Drew's always talking about, I saw him first as a pitcher. No. It doesn't matter, right? I, I, hey, this my is the guy very, that is my very first tweet with, with y'all, PBR South Carolina, was Landon Fowler down there at the shipyard. I remember a little the big old guy as a 14-year-old. But yeah, that, I, I called that one, so that's all me. He was hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about him here as an arm, right? Like and And – and again, another guy, right? You talk about size, you talk about athleticism. 6'3, 195 pounds, oozes projection right here, right? It's it's not even one of those like, oh, this is a mid-80s arms that you're gonna see through a horror, right? This is a kid who we saw at the beginning of the high school season. Down in the shipyard, we saw him earlier, 84, 87, with a questionable breaking ball. We see him on the back end of the year. I think Drew saw him on the back end of the year, was up to 88 or 89, better breaking ball. Comes to a scout day early in the summer and with about as easy of a bullpen as you can have, was sitting 87, 88. Comes out, goes 88, 91, touches 91 multiple times the other day with a really good breaking ball, spinning at 75, 76, striking out all these good hitters from California, flashing a changeup at 75. 
this is a kid that is oozing big time power arm front line starter material right here. We're going to watch him throwing on Friday nights if he makes it to college because he's a guy you can look up in a in a year year and a half that's going to be mid nineties with a plus breaking ball. And oh, by the way, he had to run off the football practice too. I think he's a tight end for his football team. So, and he had to go pitch in the big league world series and hit a home run in there too, as well. So this, this is a young man that you look and you go, he's been pitching, I think for a little over a year was a converted catcher still does that a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's a lower slot. It's a lower slot with a good slider in that situation with extremely late life swings, showing tons of swing and miss stuff. I, I can't I can't speak anymore of, of, of how high we are on Landon Fowler. And, I mean, at this point in time next year, if you're sitting here watching him and he's sitting here throwing some 95, 96-mile-an-hour pellets, nobody's going to be shocked by that one. Nobody's going to be shocked. And Drew's going to be over there, I saw him first. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, I get it. Good job. You live like five minutes from his house, so you should see him first. But, you know, regardless, I, I think tomorrow – I hope football practice doesn't interfere too. Just like Craddock and a lot of these other guys, he better have that phone charge. It's going to be a big day. Coach, football practice, he might be at the uh, Senior League World Series playing a game no far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he might not be able to get there. <laughs> yeah, Fowler's been legit. We The progression, just like most of these guys that showed up um, for the future games, the progression has been real. Um, and excited to see how they progress on and come to find out on August the 1st, see what happens. That, and that's been the cool thing with, I think, all these guys, right? Outside of Craddock, which we saw in high school, which we saw the progression in high school, right? We've talked about this before. Sheffield, I feel like we've seen for two years, coming through events, coming through tournaments. Uh, Palmer's been the same way. Brady Gold, a.k.a. Brady Quinn, as they called him. No, sorry for that one, but Brady Gold. <laughs> Lou Jack Cole, Sean, you mentioned it, right? Vorlick, we kind of saw late, but he but he showed up and, and did well. You know, Fowler, Stowe Rogers, all these guys, right? The guys that we have brought that were lucky enough to come down to the future games are guys that we have seen for quite a bit of time and have just – been going on an upward trajectory. And that that's the neat thing for us, right, that we, and we've talked about this before, but you see these guys come to some events. And, and you know, whether it's a scout day or whether it's, you know, a preseason All-State or a top pro, whatever it is, right, we see these guys and we go, those guys look pretty good. And it's not like we're patting ourselves on the back. It's all them. And they continue to get better year after year and going in the right direction. I mean, yeah. We see it a lot. The bad part of this business, I think, where a kid is a superstar, a freshman, and they get decommitted because they they're going the wrong way, right? All these guys we've talked about are trending in the right direction, and that's why it, you can, for us it's easy to speak about them, you know, because you see them a year ago or we see them six months ago, and you go, that guy looks pretty good, and now they're they're showing out at, at the biggest event, you know, in in the country for these uncommitted kids, so. It, for me, that's really fun for us to see these guys do that. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and, and it takes us to – hey, and everyone out there has their chance at an event upcoming as well. Um, as we head, we head down to Flora on Saturday for the Coastal Mavs Scout Day um, with the great and wonderful Andy Hallett. Um, big guy there. Um, and then we, we head on down to College of Charleston on August the 19th. Um, for one of the biggest events of the year in South Carolina, that is the top prospect games. Coach, a lot of Coach, kids. A lot of kids, a lot of talent. we got committed players, uncommitted players. We're up to 65 players right now that have signed up. Um, it's like 25 more than last year. So Pretty good. What, wow. what basically what these players have done for us leading up to this has helped this one grow. So all the guys that have come through in the past and have had good times at their – we we'll work out in the morning. Right now, we got – you know, last year we played one long game. Initially, we were going to do two two games. Now we're up to three games. Three games. So we're just keep, – keep three. three games, Coach. Three games. <laughs> so we're just rolling with this thing. So we're, we're only getting bigger and better with this thing, and we can't, we can't wait to get down there to the College of Charleston with the – Sean, you're missing out. 
because you're you're like an, an adult. Well, we get we get a but full day of it. We get beyond the full day of the greatest playlist in the history, <laughs> the history of PBR South Carolina events. My coach yeah. Holbrook. Oh yeah, fantastic. It's great. Yeah, I mean, that'll be good. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't be coming out to that. That's that's crazy. Three games though. That sounds like sounds a lot more like border battle than than just than just our little old South Carolina top prospect game. So <laughs> little old South Carolina, yeah. South Carolina making some noise. Hey, we'll we'll touch on. I know Drew. We'll jumping get that. Out. We're gonna get this. But little old South Carolina made some noise in the junior future game. Yeah, as well. uh, watch out. Don't don't foreshadow too much here. Uh, <laughs> Hey, we'd be reminisced here to to get off the baseball subject, so we're going to talk about something else. Um, we're going to throw out Doug's place. What about Doug's mm-hmm. place, Coach? C- Coach, we, <laughs> we were back on – you know, I feel like we're back at the concession report, but we did a little staff, <laughs> little staff lunch. Um, Doug's place, uh, you know, if guys kind of – all the people out there when they're going back to Lake Point or they're playing in something – Head, head over to Cartersville for Doug's place. I, I mean, I know we all kind of got a little something different, but the chicken and dumplings, the fried okra, the cream corn. What else did I get? I got a biscuit. Oh, you're waiting on the the end. What did you the, get? The banana pudding, boy. <laughs> Woo! Now, now you you don't don't ex- anticipate to go do anything afterwards. Okay. <laughs> but uh, incredible lunch, mm. incredible lunch. I. I I can always and I, you know our boy got the cinnamon roll. You know Blake, got, Blake got the cinnamon roll. I was a little upset, mainly because I paid for it and it looked phenomenal. But he didn't even need it all. I was I was mad when I walked out of there. Hey, and the bad thing is Matt liked it so much. After he left our last junior game, he said, "I ain't stop there before I hit the road." It's like Matt, there's no way I'd be able to drive that far and treat the dogs. No, no, no. <laughs> You know, Sean, did you do the breakfast? I yeah, I did the breakfast. So I, mine was I, I got the uh, the fried steak with the with the eggs and the and the hash browns and the grits. It was it was all real good. I was telling you how how I wasn't a big fan of grits. You know, just my previous experience, and I had it I had it here, and I was like, this is pretty good. So yeah, I get a big big reviews there for Doug's place over in Emerson. <laughs> So make, make sure you stop. Just don't sit at the uh, circular table. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe sit up top in that part. But... Hey, well, the fun times uh, had at Doug's place over there. Um, but obviously, that's going to wrap us up for episode 51. Now, episode 52, we'll talk about that junior future game uh, recap. What a big week for uh, Team South Carolina, little old South Carolina. Um, we'll just go ahead. We'll, we'll foreshadow it um, and say that Team South Carolina finished in the top 40 of 40 teams in the Junior Future Games. Coach, 40 top teams. Four of 40. I said four. I'm sorry. I said top four. I meant to say top four of 40. It was also in the top 40, so he was right. <laughs> All right. Top four of 40 teams. Um Losing to uh, Sean's, uh, we'll just whoa, call it his whoa, alma mater. Um, we, we got to because you live there. <laughs> but, hey, Sean's partial. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, but we'll obviously review that um, that week-long event on episode 52. As we know, we got we couldn't combine both on here today or we'd be on here for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we maybe we can get the Sean Smith back for that, and we'll see what his work schedule hey, is. Hey, my my, to... my off days are weird, but Monday Thursdays those those are my days. So just let me know. Yeah, looks, Mondays looks like Thursdays, Mondays. y'all hear that? Mm-hmm. We'll heard start scheduling the podcast on Mondays now, um, yeah, so we, we can get when Sean you guys Smith. Are angry, by the way, when you guys are angry watching a major league baseball game and they give you some <laughs> bad um, data, I can't say the company that they use because it's. Competitor of ours, but it's not a track man. If you get upset with some data that gets put out on the game, we can blame Sean Smith. Yes, or if you lose a bet, blame Sean Smith. <laughs> okay, we're not to do that. We got. We got. To do it. We're not allowed to do it. That's, that's, that's a, a conflict of interest there. <laughs> Real quick, I know we're, we, we've gotten off subject, but the last thing I want to touch on before we get out of here: three seventy-five college coaches, three hundred and seventy-five college coaches. I don't think our hitters saw an arm under 85 miles an hour all week. Numerous, numerous power hitters, speed guys. 
incredible, right? I mean, I obviously I'm biased. I work for the company, right? But 375 college coaches don't work for this company. So that tells you all you need to know about them showing up. And this thing is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger moving forward as this new recruiting rule really fully goes into place. But 375, no, no player out there can go put himself in that scenario anywhere else and get more eyes on you at one point in time. And you go, well, it's in one big area. It's, there's four fields going on at once. So you have one little quad that coaches can walk around. So when your game is getting played, everybody's right there. And the workout's the same way, 375. That's all I got to leave it with right there. Yeah, I mean, even in that, in that video that that uh, I, I think you took right there before that first game, I mean, that was the lightest crowd I think we had around them. I mean, we, we put that one out and it looked pretty good. But, I mean, you get a couple of, you know, a, a upper 80s, low 90s arms going out there. I mean, you've got coaches just – you know, come flocking to this field over here. So it, there, there's really not an event like it. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it was really good to get back out there. Like I was saying again, but yeah, three, three seventy five. you can't, you can't, you can't fake that. So, you know, coaches know that this is the premier event, uh, premier high school event, uh, uncommitted uh, of, of the, of any, any amateur scouting uh, baseball, you know, uh, company or anything like that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool to be a part of that and uh, see, see really we're just the continued success that we've had with this event here. So. They were 360 days away again. Um, from <laughs> <laughs> back to the grind. The as roster they call it. starts to build now. The roster now it's build. building. 26. 26. Yeah, the 2026 is are up are on the clock. Um, so, hey, that's going to do us um, for episode 51 from all of us here at PBR South Carolina. Have a great week.